Dear friends, I hope this finds you well. Over the past few weeks of the lockdown here in Melbourne, one of the really the only things that we can do is take a walk. Take a walk. As a family, we walk several times a day to walk the dog. The dog is loving this pandemic. We walk. We walk around the block. We do longer walks. We walk with the baby staple of our lives. But I came across a beautiful idea today that I think has kind of helped me look at those walks a little bit differently. There's no doubt many people are lamenting, and with good reason, lamenting our inability to go here in Melbourne. We can't go beyond five kilometers and in the, in the bigger sense of things. It's very likely many people will not be able to go on the sorts of vacations, the sorts of holidays that we could in the past, and we're going to be limited, uh, hopefully not to our neighborhoods, but to our countries. And this is a challenge, this is definitely a challenge. But I came across, like I said, a beautiful idea. And this was brought to my attention by my mother, who often comes across beautiful ideas. And it's from the blog Brain Pickings, by the, the really wonderful writer Maria Popova, who's, who's well known. She's done some really wonderful work. And she gave a review, if you could call it that, of, of a book by a woman named Alexandra Horowitz. It's called uh, On Looking, 11 Walks with Expert Eyes. And this woman, Alexandra Horowitz, basically had this theory that she's going to go on walks with all these different types of people to see how they see, to see how they see. And it came through, you know, the epiphany came through the experience of walking with the dog, her dog. We've got a dog. The dog would stop at every tree. The dog senses, sees, smells, hears things that we don't. We don't. We just kind of walk. The dog's picking up all these things and and so Alexandra Horowitz had this idea, what if I go on walks with all these other different types of people to help understand how they experience such a seemingly mundane experience as going for a walk. And so, you know, she walked with a small child and with an artist, the, the wonderful Myra Coleman, and, and other individuals, other people who just helped her see differently. And, I, and I've known these different ways of walking in my own life. I mean, I, I mentioned, of course, the, the dog that we have. My grandfather, may he live and be well, Paul Venzi, he is famous for when he walks, every person that he sees, especially if it's a beautiful woman, <laughs> every person he goes up and he speaks to them and he asks them questions. If there's something interesting about them, he'll pick it up and, and, you know, for a long time, if you've got somewhere to go, it's really annoying. But then we all start to kind of uh, internalize these habits to speak to people on the streets. Of course, now with the baby, and she's a little walker, she's been walking since 10 months. So she's, you know, she has got, got to get out there. And we take her around the block. She doesn't go very far but she picks everything up. She picks up a lot of possum poo, which isn't great, <laughs> but you know, she picks little things up and she sees little things. She sits down, plays with the leaves and, and puts her hands in the dirt and, and she notices everything. And we kind of just want to walk. Let's go, let's go from here, from A to B to Z or to Z, depending upon what country you're in. But we don't notice these things. And so it's a beautiful, I haven't read this book, but maybe I just will. And I'll post the, the link uh, to the blog down below. But it's this idea of doing an act and seeing more. The theory is, is that we walk by, and right now as I look into the little hole here of the camera, I'm focusing on one thing and missing a lot of other information, a lot of other uh, things that I, I don't want to process at this moment. But how many things are we just walking right by walking right by, especially as we go on a walk from A to Z. How we see 
the world really depends upon the mindset that we that we take. See, God says, or it's really Moshe says, I place before you today a blessing and a curse. Look into the world, look into reality, and see the blessings that are before us and the challenges, the right choices and the, the wrong choices. Last week we spoke about the importance of listening and not trying to speak. This week we're talking about seeing, about looking differently, about seeing differently. And so here, though maybe we are limited to walking, it's also an opportunity to see differently. The streets that you and I walk down, we've been walking down for many years now, this very same streets, have things in them that you have not noticed and that I have not noticed. And so our job now, as we do our little walks, is to maybe be a bit more mindful, to try to notice things that we haven't seen before, try to look through the eyes of maybe a dog or a child or an artist. They pick up everything. This is a wondrous world. Yes, it's a little bit smaller, it seems, right now. But there are still opportunities to experience wondrous things before our very eyes. One of the deepest things that we can do is train our eyes to see. To see the presence of Hashem all around us. All around us. Especially right in front of us. Shabbat Shalom.